So um, auctions on Polkadot are basically auctions for a parachain slot. Um, each of these slots will actually be for two years um, in length, um, and they're broken up into eight pieces called lease periods. And each of these lease periods will be three months long. Um, this means actually in an auction, you can have up to eight winners. You can imagine that every single winner gets a different section of this two-year period. Or you can have a situation where a really good bid um, bids for all of the lease periods, and then one parachain gets the entire two-year slot. But basically, every auction provides um, two years of availability on Polkadot for you to bid for. Um, on Kusama, this is going to be a little bit shorter. So the slot duration here is only 48 weeks, um, which is approximately one year. And then the lease periods are only six weeks long. And of course, we do this a little bit faster on Kusama because it's a canary network for Polkadot. And so we want to see all of these state transitions of parachains and stuff happening more quickly you know, to make sure that everything's running smoothly and that we we're expecting everything we expect. Um, now, there's a lot of different ways we can approach the auction system. But we actually settle on a candle auction system. Um, the candle auctions were popularized in the 17th and 18th century as an alternative to the English auction. So you probably are familiar with English auctions, where basically each person bids higher and higher until no one wants to bid anymore. Um, the candle auction adds to this process a little bit of randomness. So um, you can imagine an auctioneer would actually light a candle and then start the English auction process. Um, everyone would be bidding, but if the candle ever went out, the auction would immediately end. And even if there were more potential bids, whoever made the last bid would win. Um, this means no one exactly knows when the auction would end. And because of that, the process encourages bidders to make each bid as if it was their last. And this, of course, encourages really healthy price discovery early and discourages last minute sniping. So, you know, people jumping in last minute, making a huge bid and throwing off all of the eco economics. Um, now, if you're familiar with blockchain systems, you would know that um, anything involving randomness is not very easy. So this is actually how we implemented the candle auction system on the blockchain. So the auction is broken up into two main parts. First, we have an opening period, which is right after when the auction has started. And this allows some teams for um, teams to collect themselves, um, to set up their initial strategy, make initial bids, and to see who the competition is. And then we quickly transition to an ending period, where the auction could end at any time and the winners are decided. Um, but the way that we manage the, the random ending is basically we actually go through the entire ending period. And each block during the ending period, we capture a snapshot of the current winners. Um, we keep that snapshot all the way till the very end. And then after the entire ending period is over, we actually retroactively generate some randomness using a, verifi a verifiable random function to then select which of the snapshots was actually the end time of the auction. And of course, who the winners are. So that means that even though during the auction process, there may have been better bids than the selected snapshot, that snapshot, which we randomly selected, will be what we use to select who the actual winners of the auction are. Um, so it's also very important to note that when you bid in an auction, you use dots, but you're not actually spending those dots to win an auction. You actually just lock them up for the duration of a slot, which means that when the slot is over and your parachain is you know, off boards or it wants to continue later, you get all of your tokens back. So when tokens are locked up, you can't do things like staking or voting or transfer or anything like that. Um, but that also means really the only cost for being a parachain is actually an opportunity cost. So basically when you're bidding in a parachain auction, you're saying that the value you can bring to yourself and to the network is more than what you could get for staking, for example. And so it's really, I mean, it's super exciting to know that you can become a pair chain and not really have to spend any funds. Um, now, bidding is a little bit more complex than you might think. Um, so let's look at a hypothetical snapshot from the ending period, which I've shown here. Um, so you can see there isn't just one bid with one winner, but actually multiple bids happening at any time. Remember, the slot is broken up into eight lease periods. So when you have bids, any bidder can select among those lease periods which ones they want. Um, you can see Alice at the top is bidding for all eight lease periods um, and is willing to lock up 200 dots for that. Uh, whereas Bob only wants lease periods one and two and is only willing to lock up around 100 dots. Now, when we actually evaluate everyone's bid, we don't take it at face value. We actually increase the locked value based on the amount of time they've locked it up for. So you can see if Alice is bidding for eight lease periods um, and is willing to lock up 200 dots, those 200 dots will be locked up for a full eight lease periods. So the locked value is two times eight, 1600 um, dots in locked value. Um, again, Bob only with 100 dots for two lease periods only has 200 dots in locked value. Um, on top of that, we actually pair bidders with each other so that we can fully saturate the lease periods. So you can see that Alice, of course, would satisfy all eight lease periods by herself, 
But um, Bob and Charlie would need to uh, combine themselves together in order to um, completely saturate the full eight lease periods. So we'll actually look at Bob and Charlie's bids together when we're making the final evaluation. Um, and then if we look at the final evaluation, we sum up the, all the locked values, we would see that in this auction, Bob and Charlie will be the actual winners. Um, and if we look, neither Bob nor Charlie actually made the highest bid, but it was the fact that their overall lack value was the highest that allowed them to become the winner. Does this make sense, right? 